How you doing everybody? What you're looking at your screen is the Indusoft IDE integrated development environment. And what I've been working on recently is trying to create a Mac 3 screen set that is not as crowded and old fashioned like the regular 1024 screen set that Mac 3 comes originally on the package. So I was trying to reorganize the buttons and eliminate some fun functions that are not useful or necessary for my laser profile screen set. But anyway, uh, what you see here is just uh, when I'm trying to uh, organize these buttons using this program, although I like the program to actually make Mac 3 work and run, it's just not possible at this time for me to comprehend such a technical issue. However, uh, I'm going to show you how the screen looks if I run this uh, program. And let me just kind of position this properly here on the screen. And this is kind of what I want to have on my program or Mac 3 program. Uh, something more modern and not so crowded and cramped and I need only the buttons with the functions that I need for the laser. Now it would be excellent if I uh, make this program run in Mach 3 kind of like this but uh, it's just not possible for me for the uh, kind of technical knowledge that I have at this time but I want to do something similar, cheating a little bit, with the sense that I'm just going to use the graphics that I generate on this program. And doing that, then I can modify this on my other program, which is Krita, and make the buttons and the screen background suitable to take it to Mac 3 Screen Editor and modify at least one of the pages of the program, the main page or the run page, which uh, I'm planning to do in this video. So hopefully you have some value and some ideas on how to do this kind of stuff yourself. Eventually, I want to do all the screens uh, for all the commands available in Mac 3. And it will look a little bit better. And I'm going to just separate according to my needs. Uh, all the functions or the group of functions required for a different task for different screen set. So how can I do this without you know using the SCADA uh, program or architecture to modify something that I just can't do? Well, I'm just going to use the screen. So. First, the first thing I have to do is I'm going to actually print the screen directly to, to uh, the Windows uh, print screen command here. And doing that, let me go, I'm going to exit the program here. And I'm going to just minimize this. Now, I got it on the clipboard, the image, and I'm going to... I'm going to... Um, open paint and I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to paste the clipboard and now as you can see that's my picture of it but I want to crop it because I don't want the two screens that I got so I'm going to just select this part let's see if I can there you go I'm just going to select this and I'm going to crop it. I got to go back here and crop. Now I got an image of the screen set that I created on Indusoft. And I use Indusoft because it's very easy, very easy to actually generate this kind of pre made buttons and sliders and windows, uh, I mean LCD screens and the arrows so i just uh, added a little bit of uh, like my logo here and the 
label here, the laser profile screen set. So, okay, I'm going to save this file as a picture, save as a JPEG. All right, so uh, I got that saved there. So I'm just gonna minimize that. Now, I don't need this program anymore, so I'm gonna close it. And what I need now, I need to open up Krita. Double click on it so I can open it. Very well, so I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to have a 1920 by 1080, 150 pixels per inch. And there it is. And now I'm going to import a layer, which is that picture that we're, we just saved. So I need to import the layer. And that was Mac 3 run screen. I think this is the one. And there it is. And let me see if I can actually move it, make it fit properly here at this resolution and kind of center it. There we go. Very well, so now I got this image of everything here. So what are we gonna be doing here? I need to cut off each of these buttons and each of them will put in a separate layer. How do I do that? Well, I have to select my selection tool here and I'm going to get closer to a button and I need to indicate the program here. Oh yeah, it's got the rounded corners because I was working on it earlier. So if I press Alt, the Alt key, then I can move this selection tool around. And then when I get to the edge of the button there, I can release and now you can see that it's got the little ants marching around. And that indicates that it select that part of the, of the layer. And I'm going to right click and I'm gonna cut this selection to a new layer. So when I do that, it created a new layer and I'm gonna rename it reference of home button, right? So ref on home layer and press enter and now I can actually inhibit the visibility here and now it's not there anymore all right so I had to go back to the same layer here uh, the original layer the Mac 3 picture and I'm gonna move this selection tool to the next button and all these buttons are the same size, so I should be okay. So let me move this around. I move it with the mouse and the center wheel. I need to click on it so I can move it around. Now, you have, if you haven't used Krita, uh, Krita is a open source program for drawing and for modifying pictures, kind of like Photoshop, but it's uh, free. And all you have to do is go to uh, www.krita.org and just download the program. You can donate if you want, but this is a very, very excellent program that uh, is real good to do any kind of stuff that Photoshop might do and probably more. So it's free to download and you can donate. I did donate. <laughs> so. Um, because the program is so good. I didn't donate at the beginning because I didn't know, but uh, after I used it for, for a while, then, hey, I went back and, you know, just to help out, help out the creators of this open source program and thank them for, with uh, a few bucks. Anyway, so now let me right click on this again and I'm going to cut the selection to a new layer and I'll repeat the process I just come here and rename this as cycle start cycle start button 
just press on and then I can uh, reduce the visibility there or impede the visibility and go back to the layer so now I'm gonna keep doing this all the way till I have all the buttons move and when I do that I come back to you there was so <clears throat> I got the big buttons cut cut and put into different layers so now I have to come here and do this more buttons Shirts are this kind of the same, just a slightly different size that I make them smaller so they'll fit better with the function. So, same thing, just had to be cutting them to a different layer and renaming the layer. Of course, uh, if you do this on your own, uh, you can, you know, include the functions that you like. I'm just showing you the way that you actually modify the the set, the screen set you can put uh, whatever graphics you want so I'm going to keep doing this until I finish them all very well, so I got all the buttons cut off the thing, except for this one right here but I think I just maybe yeah, I'm gonna cut it off too alright and here now I press Control D to deselect and I'm ready for the next step <clears throat> alright so a couple of more things that I had to do I need to actually maybe cut this part right here also because I'm gonna put a small DRO for both of these uh, places or windows oh, let's cut that off okay the rest of it I'm gonna leave it alone and now before I do anything else I'm gonna duplicate this layer just to keep a copy of it there you go copy alright so I'll and do this and I work on the copy very well so now what I need to do I need to come here with the fill bucket and I'm going to select or pick up the color with control right click and I just pick up that color which is this one right here I'm gonna make it slightly darker maybe that and I'll fill all these places where I'm gonna put them of the buttons on the program I just need the location of these places there and there this one didn't feel properly so what I'm gonna do since he didn't do it properly let me go ahead uh, I can probably just fill it with foreground color, okay. I'll do this. There you go. That's the um, indicator uh, warning window that we have on the program, where in the case when there's a warning, so I just um, want to include it there. All right. So now I got this screen and. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to save this screen as a BMP or JPEG. So export. But I'm going to create a folder to put all these images. So screen set. Images. All right. So we're gonna include it there and this is gonna be the background. Background. And now it's being saved as background. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Now for the rest of the images, I need to 
get rid of the white background that I have here because I'm going to save the rest of the images as PNG images, which is all the buttons. And if I will come to the button here. But before I start exporting these buttons as PNG images, I need to actually separate the red LED part here on this button. And I have to select another one that's got the green LED part and just get rid of all the LEDs on all the buttons, the round ones and the elongated ones alike because I need the image of the button to be uh, not interfering with the actions of the LEDs flashing or turning on and off later on on the Mac 3 screen editor program. So I'm going to cut this selection to a new layer and I will remain, rename it uh, red LED long and this way I can actually deselect there you go and let me deselect now I have the button with that the LED and if you can see this transparent and the and the background there or transparent background so now I have to export it, but before I do that, I have to make the background conform to the image. Uh, it's called um, image uh, trim to current layer. So uh, that is reference of home. I have to select the layer and then I can come here and uh, trim to current layer and now you can see that uh, it's just the button that is going to get exported now I have to export as a PNG image okay I had to do the same with all the buttons and put them in that folder and then from there on the second part of this video we're gonna install them in the editor but before we do the installation, I have to actually work on the LED part so I can put them together. Uh, two LEDs. Uh, I don't know if I can do it one on top of the other or one on the side of the other. So the program will flash one LED and then the other LED. So I still got to work on that. And that'll be in the next part of this series of videos. Thank you very much for watching and uh, see you on the next one.